Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. Welcome to the Visual Novel Conference. I'm glad that I'm able to start it off. Uh, my name is Tim Reichert. Um, I've been working as an audio guy in the visual novel realm for a while now, um, covering jobs such as composition, sound design, and audio direction. And as such, I have to concern myself with all things audio and video games. And one of those concerns is, of course, also loudness, the topic of my topic today, um, of my talk today. Uh, note that when I'm talking about a game's loudness, I mean everything you hear while playing the game, not just the music or any elements individually. So you have probably had that experience before. I know I, I have. Um, you started the game, and the next thing you do is lowering the volume. If not right away, then maybe after a while, because your ears got tired. Uh, these graphs from a questionnaire by Jay Fernandez, a professional composer and sound designer, indicate um, that a game being too loud is usually a bigger problem than a game being too quiet. And the question that I want to answer with this talk, uh, the questions are, how is loudness quantified? What loudness levels should you aim for? How do you measure the loudness of your game? How do you adjust the loudness of your game? And is it really that straightforward? All right, let's start with the easiest one. How is loudness quantified? Um, nowadays, the unit of measurement of perceived loudness is LUFS, loudness units, full scale, also called LKFS sometimes, which is effectively the same though. Uh, you might also have heard of RMS before, um, though that one's a bit older. Uh, so I'd say it's best to stick to LUFS. Um, there are several ways to measure LUFS, like momentary, short-term, and integrated. Uh, you mainly only, at least for this talk, uh, need to worry about the integrated loudness. That's the one that I, as well as most articles on this topic, focus on. It measures the average loudness from the beginning of the measurement period, uh, period to the end. And LUFS is measured in negative units. So this means the more negative the number is, the lower the loudness is. So minus 14 LUFS, for example, is quieter than minus 12 LUFS. All right, what loudness level should you aim for? So here's the big problem. As opposed to television, video games don't really have a standard set yet. In the case of television, you can get into a lot of trouble for not adhering to the norms, but for video games, you have way more freedom. Um, look at this analysis of the loudness of some AAA games by Stephen Shepler, for example, um, where you can see how big the loudness gap can be. You have Bioshock here at the very top with minus 12 at UFS, while Skyrim has minus 26, which is a pretty huge range. So for long form broadcast TV content, the standard is minus 23 LUFS for the whole program for Europe and minus 24 LUFS in America for the anchor element, which I'll get to in a second. There are also further restrictions in place for ads, like how the whole ad has to be measured in America, like similar to Europe's um, uh, long form content model and the maximum momentary loudness in Europe. But you don't need to worry about those since a video game would of course fall under long form content. So it has more uh, in common with the like a full program, like a movie or a TV series than an advertisement. Uh, here we have a definition of anchor element. An anchor element is the perpetual loudness reference point or element around which other elements are balanced in producing the final mix of the content or that a reasonable viewer would focus on when setting the volume control. So anchor elements essentially means that it's the element which a viewer or player would concentrate on the most when setting their volume, which is usually the dialogue. If there is no dialogue in your game, then in the case of visual novels, that might be the music. Uh, Sony, Nintendo and Microsoft through the Game Audio Network Guild have also recommended minus 24 LUFS for console games and minus 16 LUFS for portable games. Um, it was at first minus 18 LUFS in the case of the PlayStation Vita, um, but uh, it seems like they adapted the minus 16 LUFS norm as well. The value for portable games is higher since they can be expected to be played outside where the noise level is also higher. The director at Crytek also noted that they had great experiences with minus 23 LUFS. And with such big players in the industry stating that they would like to adapt the TV loudness norms, there are definitely a lot of things speaking for it. And note that usually there's some leeway of about two units. 
So if your computer or console game is my, uh, minus 26 LUFS or minus 22 LUFS loud, then that's not such a big deal. As long as you're within that minus 24 LUFS range, you're all good. If you're developing for a handheld or mobile game, then you can take the LUFS value of minus 16 as a reference. Here again, summed up. Uh, the Audio Engineering Society recommends not to go beyond minus 16 LUFS though. So a separate entity from the game Audio Network Gold. Um, and I guess it would be up to you if you want to trust the Audio Engineering Society or the game Audio Network Gold uh, of whether you can have a plus uh, to LUFS um, limits to the minus 16 LUFS if you want to go up to minus 14 LUFS for mobile games. Aside from loudness, there are also recommendations regarding peak levels. Um, the peak is pretty much the uh, highest amplitude of the waveform. They shouldn't go beyond minus one decibel. Um, if the peak of an audio file is uh, higher than zero decibel, then this might cause distortion or strain on the ears. This especially is a big factor that many game developers might overlook since they don't necessarily uh, realize that multiple sound sources like music and sound effects and voice acting playing at the same time and stacking up can cause the volume level to go beyond this threshold. It doesn't say anything about a true peak for mobile or handheld uh, titles, the document by the Game Audio Network Guild, um, for some reason, by it, but I would still recommend to stick to the true peak uh, limits of uh, minus one decibel. Uh, I've written minus one decibel slash LU. LU is, stands for loudness units. Uh, it's the usually the um, term that's used when talking about LUFS, but one decibel is the same as one loudness unit. On top of that, there is also a loudness range a recommendation of 15 to 10, uh, 10 loudness units um, for portable games. Uh, this means that the distance between the quietest and the loudest part should be between 10 to 15 decibel or loudness units. I'm not sure why there is a minimum, minimum loudness range, but that's what the game Audio Network Guild says. Um, the maximum loudness range makes sense, since that way you can make sure that you don't have many extremely quiet or loud sections. Uh, the lack of justification in the document is a bit off-putting in general, but all the more power to you to stray from their path if you believe that doing things differently enhances the experience of your game. All right, the next point. How do you actually measure the loudness of your game? Probably the most interesting one. Before you start measuring your loudness, you will have to make sure that you do proper volume balancing of the individual assets first. This includes making sure that the voice lines don't get drowned out by the music, or that the sound effects don't jump scare the player, unless on purpose. Uh, things are starting to get a bit more vague here. So I have mentioned that Europe would want you to measure on uh, would want you to measure the full program uh, for television, while America would want you to measure the loudness of the anchor element. So in most cases, the dialogue. Most articles that deal with the topic of loudness in video games shift more towards Europe's model. This means you would um, measure the loudness of a full playthrough, uh, ideally, or uh, since games can be pretty long, um, if you want to be more efficient, uh, you should measure at the uh, very least half an hour of gameplay, preferably more like one to two hours to get a more accurate number. Though that would mean that you could miss possible peaks that go beyond minus one decibel, so be careful. That gameplay snippets or snippets you're measuring should include quiet and loud scenes in proportion meaning that if you have a lot of quiet puzzle scenes, then your gameplay measurement should feature more of those than loud action heavy scenes. Note that audio signals below a certain threshold are usually ignored by the loudness metering software. So no worries if your game has scenes without any sounds. Those will automatically be ignored and not factored into the average loudness. Though visual noise are in many cases more consistent in their loudness uh, than action games anyway. So you might not even have to do that and you might ha not have to measure for quite as long. If you are afraid that some would still want to turn the game volume up, then aim for your target loudness while defaulting all volume knobs to 75% or 50%. That way players can still easily turn up their volume. Regarding the tool that you can use to measure the loudness, I recommend the Yulin Loudness Meter 2, which of course, or which has a free version of course, otherwise I wouldn't be recommended, uh, recommending it here. You can just download it off the website. Um, and install the application. You don't necessarily need the plugins unless you want to use them in a video editing or audio editing 
editing software. Then you open the software, go to File, Preferences, change the driver type to System Audio, and under Output Device, you have to choose your audio device. In my case, it's the Focusrite USB audio, my audio interface next to me. In your case, it might be whichever audio card you have uh, installed in your PC. Then you start the game. You can press the red X at the bottom to um, restart the audio capture. Uh, capture in the sense of it doesn't like record audio, but uh, it starts listening and you, if you click the red X. Then you play the game for a few hours and check the integrated LUFS value here at the, uh, at the top, outlined in red. The true peak max, outlined in, outlined in red at the bottom. And additionally, the loudness range, if your game is a portable game. All right, there's everything again summed up. Um, by the way, all these like summed up slides will be in my script that I will be uploading after my talk into the Discord channel. All right, um, how do you adjust the loudness of your game? Let's say you have measured the loudness of your game and have found that uh, the LUFS value is actually way higher or lower than what you were aiming for. Then it's time to adjust the loudness of your game assets. You just have to import them into an audio editor and lower or increase the volume of all assets by the same amount. Um, physics fortunately make this easier than one would think, as long as you're not using any middleware on your engine that puts effects or limiter or compressor on the audio, which might skew the measurements. But I don't imagine there are many here who do that. And if you do, if you're, for example, using WISE, which is a popular audio middleware, I believe that one has a loudness metering software built in. So you can use that. Um, so if you lower all audio assets by one decibel, which is the same as one loudness unit, um, then the LUFS of your product drops by one LUFS. So if the LUFS of your measured gameplay session is minus 16 and you want to drop it down to minus 23, uh, for example, then all you have to do is drop the volume of all audio assets by seven decibel. Increasing the volume might be more difficult since you could potentially clip the audio assets. So you will have to be careful about that. But in those cases, uh, you can either decrease the volume of the troublemaker, like the sound effect or voice line. Um, like if you lower one as a sound effect or one, one voice line, it won't have such a big impact on the LUFS, uh, as opposed to music. In the case of music, it might be more difficult since, you, um, since music is uh, heard over a longer period of time. So it has a bigger effect on the LUFS value. Alternatively, you can also compress the assets. Um, use a compressor on them to decrease their dynamic range. Uh, personally, I have heard that the minus one decibel true peak threshold that is applied to audio assets in general is a bit overkill and that minus 0 0.5 decibel might be good enough, but that's more anecdotal evidence. So it might be safer to try to stick to a true peak maximum of minus one decibel. Now the really big question. Is it really that straightforward? The short answer is, unfortunately, no. Um, loudness isn't a straightforward topic, neither in music, nor in television, and especially not in video games. Games are an interactive medium. Some players will spend more time in louder action sequences, while others will spend more time in quiet puzzle sequences. The integrated LUFS value of the play sessions of these different kinds of players will look different. In visual novels, though, the variation usually consists of reading speed and choices. Uh, so these are usually less impactful compared to games with more interaction, so maybe less for you to worry about. Though then again, you could have a loud route and a quiet route. So you might, if you wanted to, um, look into leveling the different routes to have them be equally loud, or maybe you want to make one route actually um, consciously louder because it just enhances the gameplay experience. And well, some players will only ever see one of the routes and opinions on whether the game was loud or quiet could differ. Connected to that is also the difference in play session lengths. The thing is that measuring the loudness of the program, in the case of television, uh, meaning either the episode or a whole movie, makes sense because you usually watch them in one sitting. In the case of a game, on the other hand, you have multiple play sessions. So you have a game that has one longer loud sequence, that's for example, two hours long, and your player starts their play session at exactly that place at the beginning of this loud section, then the ears are more likely to get tired after those two hours, as opposed to them starting the play session before that and ending their play session in the middle of that loud section. 
So some play sessions might seem loud to the player, while others will seem fine. Another problem is the difference between measuring integrated loudness of a full play session and measuring an anchor element. Like I said, most suggest measuring the loudness of a full play session. In television, on the other hand, some complaints have been brought up that speak against it, which is maybe the reason why American television standards wants you to orient it on the anchor element. A comedy sitcom series, here pictured on the left, uh, has little dynamic range, um, usually, uh, or oftentimes uh, has little dynamic range and focuses on dialogue, uh, which means that it will have a more consistent dynamic range, while an action series, here pictured on the right, uh, which switches between dialogue and loud explosions will have a bigger dynamic range. Um, here the black, rhyme, uh, black line represents the average loudness of minus 23 LU of S, uh, while the red line um, represents the dialogue loudness. And as you can see, um, in the case of the comedy show, the dialogue will usually be about as loud as the average loudness. But in the case of the action series, the dialogue will actually, depending on the content of the episode, if there's a lot of explosions, then it will usually be quieter than the average loudness. And since understanding the dialogue is pretty important for most, they will usually turn up the volume on the action series. So there are also arguments for using the anchor element method if you want to go for that. There's a lot of room for experimentation and finding out what's best for your game. I personally like the anchor element option, but it brings its own problems, like deciding what the anchor element is, like is it going to be the voice acting, or if you don't have any voice acting, it's going to be the music or the sound effects or something totally different, like the ambience, or deciding, uh, there's also the problem of deciding whether all singular anchor element items should be equally, equal, equally loud. Uh, like, should all single voice acting lines be minus 23 LUFS loud or minus 24? Then there are also other loudness problems that one might overlook, like loudness range, for example. Uh, which was only mentioned in the game audio network cult uh, documents uh, regarding the mobile games um, or handheld games. Even if your average loudness is in a good range, if there are scenes or sounds that are so quiet that the player can barely hear them, or even though they should, or if um, there's another point uh, where the sound is so loud that it hurts the ears, then you have still missed your goal of creating a good listening experience. Another one would be loudness consistency of individual assets kind of similar to the um, what I talked about when talking about the anchor element just a second ago, like um, making sure that the voice acting can still be heard even if it's whispered and doesn't hurt the player's ears even if it's screamed. Um, I don't have enough time unfortunately to go into detail on those topics, but there are definitely things to keep in mind as well. One goal of finding a common loudness level is usually to make also to make sure that players don't have to change their volume when switching to another game. Uh, since visual novels are less interactive, that goal can be easier to reach. But now you might think, but if I adhere to these norms um, or these tips, but a developer of another game doesn't and the player switches from my game to theirs or the other way around, won't my game feel too quiet? Well, here's where ear fatigue comes in. If your game is quiet compared to games by developers that haven't dealt with the topic of game loudness, then that's definitely still your win. Having to turn a game up is way less of a painful experience than having to turn it down or to have to stop playing after a while. And like I mentioned, you can default the volume slider 75% and players can still turn them up at will if they want to. Another, uh, another advantage is that usually audio has to be compressed to reach a higher loudness level, meaning dynamics get squashed and the listening experience possibly maybe suffers. I have, of course, also done my own investigation into vision novel loudness levels, um, similar to Stapler's investigation into AAA games. And as you can see, it's a huge range from minus 12 LUFS with Fates and Night Rider Nua, the Windows version, to minus 25 LUFS with Danganronpa V3 at the very bottom, and then everything in between. I don't have time to go into detail on all of them. I have found a few like interesting nitbits uh, about them. So you can um, see uh, the things that I've commented on them in my uh, script that, like I said, I will be uploading after my talk into the Discord channel. All right, to sum things up, norms work best if all or most people actually stick to them. But even if you are one of the few people in the visual novel scene who end up following these tips, uh, these tips, you will still come out as a winner, seeing how many other advantages having your game be quieter gives you. 
There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to loudness in video games, but you might find different solutions that make more sense for your specific game, maybe. But hopefully I was able to give you the tools and information necessary to create a good listening experience for your game. Thank you for listening and let me know if you have any questions. All right. Like on the dot timed well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so questions. I think I've seen a few in the normal Zoom chat. Let me see if I can find drag, drag one up. Uh, someone asked if the loudness meter needs a DAW to work. Nope, it's a, you can install the standalone um, application, which was the thing at the very top. I can go back to that slide real quick. Um, and you can just run it on your uh, PC as a standalone. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, someone has asked if you have any. They have you have any recommendations on compressor unit settings like ra ratio, gain, blah blah, etc. Um, nope. That might be um, actually an individual thing. Some uh, sounds might work better with different compressor settings, but uh, it's maybe too individual for me to really answer it in like a concise sentence. So um, unfortunately not, sorry. You might have to uh, try out different things to see what works best. Uh, someone's asking if you can measure set loves in Audacity. Um, yep, you can. Uh, no, you can, you, know, uh, you have a loudness normalization feature with which you can kind of uh, see if your loudness uh, is below or above it. I'm not sure if there are any extra plugins. I believe you can um, import plugins into Audacity to measure uh, the loudness. Um, like you could like, uh, for example, use the ULIN loudness meter, uh, install the plugin and then import it into Audacity. I believe that works. Or like I said, alternatively use the normalized loudness function under effects and see if your loudness is above or below. Um, that's uh, your value. Cool. Any more questions? While I'm waiting, uh, DS, I'm going to give you presenter so you can set your screen up. Yeah, go ahead. Or you can take uh, over, I think. You can just present so, over. So I asked um, about high frequencies. Um, there, I haven't seen anything about high frequencies on uh, industry standards, um, unfortunately. I mean, in the end, it might come down to you having to um, individually decide, uh, are these frequencies or is that sound because it has such high frequencies going to hurt my player's ears? Uh, like having, like putting that in the questionnaire for your play testers, for example. Uh, I haven't seen any norms, unfortunately, on that. Cool. A lot of people are just like surprised Audacity can even do plugins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the especially the loudness normalization thing effects. Uh, I was pretty surprised that it had that one too. Like it's not the plugins I also uh, find out pretty recently, but uh, especially loudness normalization function was added, I believe, at the beginning of this year, pretty much when I first uh, tried to uh, get into this topic. Um, it's pretty interesting that they added that since most people like to uh, go for loudness um, peak normalization instead of loudness normalization when normalizing their audio files. Okay, if there are no other questions, then let's go have DS, you're up. How is um, my mic first and foremost? Mm, no, what? What was that? How is my microphone? Because I've had some issues with before. Oh, it, it's fine. It's on a oh. little on the quiet side, but we can hear you. That's, that's all right then. Right. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready to start.